at 7 a.m. So uh, it, it's a different time zone than most of the people that are watching right now. I think it's right. almost bedtime for, for some of the people watching. Um, and I'm doing pretty good. Good. All good. things considered. How about you? You're That's in Ohio. Ohio. Yes, yes. I'm in Ohio. So three hours, you know, to the to the east of you. Uh, so it's 10 o'clock where I am. So it's still morning uh -huh. time. Um, but obviously 2020 is a weird year. Uh, how has it been for you? You know, are you staying safe? Are you staying sane? How is it going for you? I'm, I'm trying. I'm, we've been pretty vigilant about COVID uh, precautions and um, and that's meant a lot of, you know, isolation, uh, spending time with just the family and uh, and it's been good and bad. I mean, there's parts of it that have been lovely, like spending a lot more time with the kids of course, and um, and spending a lot more time cooking and just, you know, sort of settling into that. But at the same time, uh, I've been, you know, on the on the bad side. Um, I've been spending a lot more time with the kids and doing a lot more cooking. <laughs> right. and, um, I, I actually, <clears throat> so for me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a little bit, uh, earnest here for a second, but for me, I was, I had, um, for a long time, you know, I've been on the show for 12 years, Supernatural. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the show was sort of like, the plan was for the show to wrap in April. And, um, it was bittersweet, of course, you know. Mm -hmm love the cast and crew, love uh, so much about the show. But for all of us, it felt like it was time to move on. And we had a lot of lead time. We knew that the show was going to end for m well over a year. Right. Um, so there was there was time to reflect on, you know, what's going to happen when the show ends. And I decided I was going to give myself a, a three-month sabbatical where I wasn't going to take any other auditions. And I was just going to sort of focus on figuring out the answer to the question, what do I want to be when I grow up? I hear you on that and, one. And it and I, and I built up a lot of anticipation for that. I was really feeling like I needed that, and mm -hmm. it was going to be an important um, period of self reflection. And then, of course, we got to uh, you know early March, and production got shut down. Right, and we got thrust right into COVID. Uh, you know, shelter in place, and the that 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 time never really came. I mean, it, it, it's a lot of work, um, just, you know, trying to homeschool and of course like, trying to keep the house together and all that. Uh, and, and I really didn't get any time to reflect and, and to myself. And because I had built up so much anticipation, that was actually kind of hard. Like I, I, can was, understand. Oh, I really needed that. Um, so right now I'm actually trying to, uh, trying to give myself a little bit of that. I'm trying to carve out some, some me time and it's actually, Really nice. <laughs> no, I can. I mean, with so long of a character, you know, portrayal, you have to teach yourself how to say goodbye. And this interruption has definitely, you know, kind of, you know, jilted that quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, there's what seven episodes left for mm -hmm. what this last season is supposed to be. Yeah. Um, okay. One and, and a half, one and a half episodes left to shoot. Oh wow! Oh my yeah. goodness! And Supernatural is uh, is going back into production uh, very very shortly. Okay. And will be one of the first shows in Vancouver back uh, on on set. Certainly uh, glad to hear that. I think that they figured, you know, there are a lot of shows out there with, with you know, that have a lot of legs and they're going to have m many more seasons to come. Uh, but Supernatural only has one and a half episodes left and the, and the studio network figure, if those guys die, no big deal. You know, they're, we can afford <laughs> to lose terrible. them. So oh we're, the, we're the canaries in the coal mine. We're, I, I think we might be like the, one of the very first shows going okay. back uh, to shooting. Um, and yeah, I, I think that they feel like, yeah, we can afford to lose those guys. The penance of the last season. That's what we'll call it. Yeah. <laughs> now, obviously time travel has been a fun part of, of Supernatural's history. If you could go back and warn us of what 2020 would bring, would you do that? Would you let us know? Give us a heads yeah, up. Yes, I would, because I feel like there's a lot of preparation that could have gone into this that would have, uh, alleviated a lot of the suffering and death. So I oh think that would have been a good move. I mean, there were a lot of people that were warning us that this was going to come, <laughs> like Bill Gates and, right. and many others at the CDC. Uh, like five years ago. Their, their warnings went unheeded by the powers that be at the moment, and uh, especially in the U.S. Um, no, no. Also in the in the U.K., there are a lot of places that drop the ball on this. Right, right. <clears throat> so, yeah, Castiel could definitely uh, just kind of lead us in the right direction. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've already got some fan questions loaded up here. So I, okay. I want to give these guys, you know, as much time with you as possible. So Remy wants to know, what is uh, your favorite part about being a dad? 
which is such a heavy question right off the it's bat. A heavy question. Um, favorite part of being a dad. Right. Well, <clears throat> um, I mean, it's it's hard to say. There there's so many lessons to be learned. Do you have kids? Oh God, do I? I have five children. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yes. Wow. So yeah. um, I, I know mean, about kids have, have this incredible capacity to bring us into the present. You know, okay. when, we're, when we're parenting well yes. and connecting with our kids, it's this. It's a, It's such a lovely moment. Um, I um, I don't know. I mean, I love I love so many things about uh, fatherhood. I love um, I love playing. You know, I'm playing more now than I have in decades uh, because I have kids. Um, I love I love being with them when they're eagerly learning something. Mm, I love yes. like that that process of them soaking things up and feeling like I'm I'm passing things along. Um, yeah, um, there's a lot of there are a lot of great lessons in fatherhood too. Like it really does sort of make you want to be a better person. Absolutely. Um, yeah. What about you? What's oh your, my goodness. What's your, I mean, can you even answer that question? What's the it's, favorite? It's thing so hard. Uh, I, the funny like joke of all things is my firstborn son, who is now 16, so this will be very, very embarrassing for him. Um, when he was very little, uh, we had an argument about the uh, purpose of trees. Uh, uh -huh. His impression was the purpose of trees was to hold up the sky, and yeah. uh, that's why they're so tall. And I'm like, no, 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 they do other things. He's like, yeah, no, they hold up the sky. Like, that's all they're good for. That's it you know, 100%. So it's, it's those funny things when you see that kid perspective and you go, wow, that's how you see all of this. And it's yeah. so magical. So yeah, magical. it is magical. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, going into more about the show, Melinda wants to know, what was your first impression of Jensen and Jared? Um, and obviously that kind of ties into, were you a fan of the show beforehand or was it kind of a crash course? It was a crash course. I was not a fan of the show. I watched a couple of episodes just to try mm -hmm. to bone up before I got to set, but I had no idea what I was getting into. Um, my first impression of Jared and Jensen was that they, they were actually warm and inviting. Like they they made an effort to make me feel welcome. Mm -hmm. um, but I uh, I didn't really. I, I didn't really know the show well enough to know whether I was fitting in or not. So I think mm -hmm. I had a little bit of an insecurity going into it. Like, am I being, is this too weird what I'm doing? Um, and it took a while for us to become friends. Like we didn't really buddy up uh, probably for five or six episodes. Um, and I also, you know, when you're a guest star on a show, um, you can often just feel like the new kid at school who's going to be gone in a week, so nobody really pays attention to you anyway. Supernatural does a much better job. Like the 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 culture of the set is much better than many other shows that I've worked on, That's and awesome. they, they made a real effort to make me feel welcome right away. Nonetheless, I sort of thought, well, I'm only going to be here for you know a couple weeks, right. so I'm not going to invest in these friendships. And it took me a while to be like, oh. Shit, I might be here for a while. <laughs> I should probably talk to these people. Hey, you know, we should be cool. We should we should probably get a drink. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I totally understand that. Uh, we've got uh, Jacinta from South Africa. Wants to know, what is your favorite dad joke? So <clears throat> this guy uh, hears a knock at the door. Uh, he opens the door. He sees a snail on the front steps. Picks it up, throws it into the yard. Two years later, here's a knock at the door opens the door, it's the same snail. The snail says, hey, what was that all about? <laughs> That's pretty good. That's I'm writing that down. I'm going to be using that one later. I have a three-year-old. She will love it. <laughs> Snails is perfect. Um, okay, so I'm going to butcher this name, so I apologize. Ellen Nidrog uh, as, says, Cass has lost so many family members. Um, if you could introduce Jack to any of the angels he's been close to, how do you think that would go? Um, oh, so many angels have died on the show. I mean, it's actually like a horrible genocide of angels. It really is. We had, um, I mean, I think we started with maybe millions of angels. I don't know how many there were. I mean, there were definitely thousands. And I think we've sort of whittled it down to a couple dozen by the yeah. end. Yeah. Um, 
I think I think that there would probably be some hazing that went into it. Um, and uh, but I think ultimately Jack would be welcome with with open arms into the uh, into the fraternity of angels. <clears throat> um, we had uh, one of the first angels that was on the show other than me was Uriel. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had occasion to uh, see Robert Wisdom uh, plays Uriel. And he uh, he was shooting something not too far away. And he texted me. He was like, hey, man, can I stop by? I hadn't talked to him in more than a decade. Wow. And he swung by and he looked just the same. And it, and we uh, we had a really lovely afternoon catching up. Um, but uh, Alex was there and Alex met him and they were friendly, if that's any measure of how the angels I think that counts back. I think that counts I mean we want friendly angels uh yeah. Cass might be a little bit on the meh side of things sometimes but we like friendly angels let's go yeah. yeah uh Jade wants to know do you have any projects that you can share with us right now aside from finishing up uh the last season uh no uh yes I do I'm writing uh, a book of poetry and I'm almost done with that so that uh, hopefully will be uh published in, in the next year or so That's um and I have two two projects that I'm trying to develop. So mm -hmm. a couple of uh, true stories that I have optioned that I'm trying to get made. Um, those I'm not going to tell you what they are, but um, they're interesting, sort of politically, uh, socially politically relevant stories. And I'm working on trying to get uh, Biden elected and uh, Trump out of office. Um, so I'm, I'm working with the Biden team to uh, try to bolster his campaign. And that's probably that's something that I'll be spending a lot of energy on in the next uh, few months anyway, trying to get people out to the polls and trying to uh, get them to vote. Yes. Bye -bye. yes. <laughs> oh my goodness! The most important things to be said right now. Um, obviously, you also have the the new project, uh, Super Good, that you're working on. Can we, yeah. Can we so Michael Sheen and I did a fundraiser um, for um, we 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 were splitting the funds between um, helping uh, homeless projects uh, in Wales mm -hmm. and uh, and and funding uh, a nonprofit that I work with in Washington called Lydia, Lydia Place, which helps uh, families uh, in in homelessness. And um, it was so lovely collaborating with him. We finished that campaign, but if people wanna still buy stuff from stands, that we still have uh, things that you can buy on the stands website that will still go to funding this. So it's Excellent. an ongoing thing. Excellent. Yeah, people definitely need to, to know that and support those things because uh, to be a hero on the screen is one thing, to be a hero in real life is something even better. Um, so, so I thoroughly appreciate that. Um, let's see, Lauren says, Thor thousands of people go to conventions to meet you, but who would you go to a convention to meet? Um, well, for a long time, I would have answered um, Bob Garfield, who's a public radio personality who I, for, for many years, ena was enamored by. Okay. Somebody asked me a similar question when I was on stage uh, a couple of years ago at a convention. And I answered Bob Garfield, and I went into a lengthy explanation as to why I loved him so much. And then the next day, my phone rang, and it was Bob Garfield. Wow. And I was so excited. And he and I have subsequently become friends, and it's been such a a cool thing to be able to answer that question and have it materialized for you. It's, I, I felt very lucky. Um, That's super awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Oh, <sighs> okay. Joe from London asks, uh, if you could have any job following on, uh, from acting, what would it be? Uh, what would you like to do and why? Hmm. You know, that, well, this is funny that you should ask this because when I said that I wanted to take a sabbatical and figure out what I want to do when I grow up, this is exactly the that thing right. that I was masticating on or hoping to masticate on. And I am interested in I'm interested in making uh, public art. I'm interested in exploring the world. I would love to um, I would love to maybe um, do a, a series for television where I just sort of travel around and interview interesting ordinary people um i might i might be interested in politics i am interested in politics i don't know in what capacity okay um but i'm trying to unpack all of these things um i would also like to spend more time 
not doing things. I tend to get myself really busy and do like tons of different projects and then find that I'm too, um, I'm too scattered to actually uh, sink, sink deeply creatively gotcha. into any one of them. So I'm trying to pare things down, but also figure out what I'm most excited about. And I don't actually have a good answer for that question. Well, that's a very smart thing to be self-aware about. In fact, it like lends itself perfectly to the next question. Amanda wants to know what's your favorite self-care activity? Hmm. Um, well, it used to be running, but my hips went out and I can't run anymore oh, no. right now. So um, I, I love meditating. I meditate every day and I always feel better when I do. Um, I, what else? I like tea and I consider okay. that, I consider that a, a self-care. Absolutely. Um, What's your favorite tea? Well, I, I think I probably, I probably like, uh, like a milk oolong or a monkey picked oolong. Okay. Um, there are, so I probably like a Chinese green tea. Nice. Is my nice. favorite. Although okay. there are some, there's some Japanese greens that I like a lot too. Yeah. I, I like uh, I'm sort of to meditate in the morning morning when it comes to tea. Oh, this oh wrong I, I, I like tea all day. Not all day. <laughs> I try to stop. I try to stop by like three o'clock in the afternoon. So okay. I, so that way you can go to sleep. Yeah. I got you. Meditation wise, do you prefer to meditate in the morning or in the evening? Morning. Okay. Start your day off right. I like that. I'm going to totally take that into myself. Um, Catherine asks, will there be any more mini gish hunts? I think so. I okay. don't know. Catherine, uh, how did you like that mini gish hunt did, or the mini gish hunts? Did you enjoy them? Can I'm going to say yes. You see your answer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going it, to wait for it to um, cycle back, but I'm going to say yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think so. It was a, it was a funny thing. We So for I've, I've been doing GISH, which is the world's largest scavenger hunt, for mm -hmm. about 10 years. And uh, this year, when the pandemic hit, I realized, oh, my God, everybody is stuck at home. They're, they don't know what to do. I know that because I'm stuck at home with my kids, and we're trying to figure out what to do. Why don't we just do a mini scavenger hunt that you can do from home right now? Awesome. And, uh, and and we did. And it was actually, and I participated in my own scavenger hunt for the first time with the kids, and I learned some things. I learned, one, it makes a total horrendous mess in the house. So <laughs> from that point forward, I was like, I'm going to try to make items that don't make such a disgusting mess in the house. Um, but uh, also, uh, it was fun. The kids had fun, um, and I had fun. So um, so we did another one, and I think we're going to do another one, um, maybe to coincide with the uh, – so, you know, near near the end of uh, the show, Supernatural. Okay. Supernatural, the last episode, I think, is going to air sometime in November. Okay. Um, and so maybe we'll do we'll do another uh, mini hunt some sometime right before that to sort of uh, to mourn the passing of the show. One hundred percent. Can count me in on that one. I definitely want to be a part of that. Uh, May wants to know: Would you ever do Doctor Who? Mm -hmm. That's a that's a no brainer. Yeah. Without May, do you have, do you have a, an in for me? Can you yeah, can you yeah. Me? May hook it up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, I'll co-sign every, every bit of this. It's absolutely what yeah. needs to happen. Uh, Lou has asked, what was the weirdest thing that happened to you on a trip? That seems very broad. I don't know if that's like a work trip, if that's a travel trip or anything. But what do you got in terms of the weird? Or an acid trip? <laughs> uh, I wasn't going to put you out on blast like that. But since you said um, it. The weirdest thing that happened to me on a trip. I mean, I have been on so many trips and so many weird things have happened. Um, some of them are slightly inappropriate and I won't share. Thank you. Um, My Nana's going to see this. I um, I traveled around the world uh, with my now wife, then girlfriend, uh, 24 years ago. And we we wanted we brought with us a high eight video camera, which is like a, was a high end consumer video camera um, that had a little cassette tape in it that you recorded <laughs> on. And uh, we were we were hell bent on making a documentary uh, somewhere around the world, but we didn't know what the topic was going to be. And we we started with a theme that was on on medicine and we started you know interviewing hospitals and interview uh in, interviewing doctors and infiltrating hospitals um and then 
And then we saw that like we were in India and we saw these rivers that were just like filled with garbage oh. with uh, people washing their dishes with like a dead cow floating down the river in the same water. And we were like, wow, there's, there's like, there's no waste management here in India. Why don't we make a documentary about waste management, <laughs> which was something that we knew nothing about. And we're like a couple of kids. I mean, we really, I think we were 18 years old or no, no, no. How old were we? We were, we were 20. We had no business doing this, but we wound up in the offices of the minister, the minister of health of, for all of India wow. and interviewing him about, uh, about waste management in India. And it was such a surreal moment for a couple of kids. And then somewhere about half an hour into the interview, the guy figured out that we had no business being here and th that we were not like important American television people. <laughs> we were just a couple of kids with like a high-end prosumer camera. And uh, he had security <laughs> escort oh, out, wow. out of the building. It was pretty, uh, it was pretty phenomenal. That right there has got to be one of the best like mm -hmm. anniversary memories of yeah. remember that time we went to India. That's that's got to be amazing. Um, Jody wants to know if for twenty four hours, just a single day, you had Cass's powers. What would you do? Oh, um, <clears throat> well, I think at the moment the thing that is on my mind most is the fact that the U.S. Postal Service seems to be getting sabotaged by our president, yeah. so that. Um, he, he can disenfranchise voters. So I would love, I mean, Cass has the capacity to teleport, uh, mm -hmm. which means he can travel at near infinite speeds. And I think it would be great if Cass were just to deliver all of the absentee ballots uh, to the proper polling station yes. on uh, on election day or before, right before election day. Right before, before election day. right before, <laughs> like count these, that's what's up. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's the, that's the perfect, Staff, that's the perfect one. I like it, one hundred percent. Jade wants to know if you could meet, uh, actually meet the Queen. What would you do? That's a that's a big one. Do you have ambitions to meet the Queen? I had this sort of we. I had a, a a fairly surreal Twitter feed when I first got on Twitter a a decade or so ago, or and uh, I I created this sort of s persona who. I would tweet about my relationship with the queen, mm -hmm. uh, which was tawdry. And, uh, <laughs> and she and I had a lot of trysts and some jealousy in our relationship. And when I, <laughs> when I went to London, uh, I was a little bit afraid that I was going to be apprehended for all of these <laughs> sort of blasphemous comments uh, that I had made about the queen. So I think I would start with an apology. Okay. All right. And work my way in into a a romantic kiss. And I was gonna say, like, it's got to build up to something, you yeah. know. Just kind of, you know, I'm sorry, unless you're going, unless, you, <laughs> unless you're interested. Do you fancy? <laughs> Do you? <laughs> um, I think we should actually make that something that needs to happen. In fact, may ask if there's anything on your bucket list, and I'm going to ask you to put that on there. Is yeah. to uh, sneak a kiss from the. That sounds really lovely. Yeah. 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 Um, and if you're gonna go out. Go out with a kiss from the queen. I think yep. that's, that's it. Uh, <laughs> uh, Carrie didn't uh, didn't or Dighton ask, uh, what is the one question that you wish you would be asked and what would be your answer? That is the weirdest question I think I've ever heard. I love it. Um, I think it's a total cop out. Oh. Uh, because it's basically making me do the work of um, mm. coming up with a question instead of coming up with a question yourself. Mm. Now I'm already going through the you know, arduous work over here of answering <laughs> questions. I have to ask questions and answer questions. It's true. It's, it's true. An unfair burden. Man, especially um, to ask a question you already know the answer to. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I've never really pondered this uh, this particular question, but I would say uh, one question that I know that no one has ever asked me that I think is sort of a glaring omission is, what's my favorite constellation? Whoa, whoa. And the mm -hmm. answer is? Uh, Cygnus the Swan. Wow. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Because it really, it's one of the few constellations that I feel you can really pick, you can really see the outline of it. Most of the constellations are, the Big Dipper, you know right. what it is, but it's a, it's a ladle. 
which is right. I mean, it's, not- it's a ladle. Let's be honest. <laughs> and who cares? But Cygnus the Swan really kind of does look like the outline of a swan. If you look at like, you know, any of the other constellations, I mean, Orion and Orion's Bell, it's like, well, that does not look, that even look like, like well, well, you make that up, you right? About. Um, but Cygnus the Swan looks like a swan and it's also flying directly in line with the Milky Way. Um, so it's a, I think it's the best constellation. Thank you for asking that question that allowed me to ask myself that question. Yes, yes. That that's. I think we're all kind of enlightened. I would have yeah. guessed that it would have been like, what's your favorite cereal? And... Hmm. you know, Saturday morning cartoon to go along with it. Like make it. Well, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's pretty good. That's pretty that was, good. Actually. I was, I was skirting any real emotional uh, depths there. You know what though? I'm, I'm with you there. I like it. And now it might be my favorite constellation <laughs> moving forward. I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, Lou wants to know what language would you like to learn if you could magically wake up and know any extra language? Chinese Mandarin. Mm-hmm. It is one of the most difficult to learn. Yeah. Also my kids have been studying Mandarin for about a year and they're starting to be able to say stuff that I don't understand and that I don't like being out of the loop. I, I don't like that. having a secret language, so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> it's great for you to learn that in secret so that way when they say something and you kind of clap back right. at them and they're like. That's a good point. Thank you for pointing that out. I got you, I got you. It's dad when I magically learn uh, Mandarin without making any effort, I would I like that. not to tell anyone. There you go, there you go. <laughs> Dizzy Bun- Bunny wants to know, uh, is there a scene you filmed as Cass that you wish you could go back and redo? <clears throat> yes, there is. I'm so glad you asked. Um, so Castiel had a lot of iterations. There was mm-hmm. like, uh, there's regular old warrior Cass who first showed up. There's Cass who became a human. There's Ka- There was Nazi Cass. There was, uh, there was Cass that was possessed by Lucifer. Um, there was am- cast with amnesia. There were so many different versions of cast. Um, but one of the versions of cast was crazy cast, where he was um, in, like he, he was in, he was institutionalized and mm-hmm. um, he was talking about being naked and covered in bees. And he was just a little loopy. Uh, he seems frankly schizophrenic and. Right. I, I had some ideas when we went to shoot the first scene. <clears throat> and Ben Edlund, who wrote that episode where Cass first became crazy, was also directing. And I had some ideas, and so I tried it on the first take. And we don't get a lot of rehearsal time. And Ben came out from behind the monitors, and he was like, maybe try to do the opposite of what you just did. And so I did um, whatever the opposite was. But it right. didn't, I, I don't really feel like I hit the, I didn't have enough time to really like hit the character right. And that, so that, it wasn't, it wasn't long. I think it was maybe only three episodes, but there was a little arc with crazy cast. And I felt like the character never really landed. Um, it always felt a little false to me. Okay. Um, and I, 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 I always wished, like, I wished I could have, I, I wish I could have better found that particular character. That's really well said. Now, in the years since, have you played around with what that would actually be like? Nope, I haven't actually done okay, the homework. Okay. I let it go, but I know, uh, I know that it could have been a little more fun and a little okay. more dynamic than than it was. I respect that absolutely. Um, Aaron wants to you know bring it back to the real world a little bit and says, uh, "What have been some of the go to quarantine meals that you've cooked with the kids?" Um, we have. I've been doing. I, you know, it's funny, normally when I cook, <clears throat> I cook fairly like elaborate meals uh, for the for the family. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as quarantine set in and as the dishes piled up, our dishwasher broke. Oh no. Uh, it was like, come on, I can't have a broken dishwasher, not now. Um, but uh, I, I started to, I did do more sort of simple cooking. Mm-hmm. Um, there would be like one pan and, uh, so and and also because I'm not you know I'm not normally home for three meals a day for weeks on end you know right. I'll be home for I'll be home for five meals in a week or something like that but not that many so um, I uh, I did start doing some simple things and one of them was I started making a lot of fried rice for for lunch because the kids love it of and course. I put a lot of different like veggies and stuff like that in there and um, but it's quick and it's easy and there's only one pan 
That's awesome. That's awesome. I love that. What sort of vegetables do you like to put in your your fried rice? What whatever whatever is sort of lying in the vegetable drawer in the fridge. Gotcha. No, I respect that. See, yeah. now as a parent, I've got three teenagers, so my dishwasher is never broken because uh, it's always a kid. Uh, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Lisa wants to know: Is there another wish list show that you would like to guest on? Um. At the of uh, shows that are uh, airing right now, mm -hmm. uh, not that I can think of. Um, I really loved um, House of Cards. I'd love to do something like that, like some real, very grounded political drama. Mm -hmm. I'd love to try something that's not in the sci-fi fantasy realm, maybe. Um, it's it's interesting to play one character for such a long time mm -hmm. in one specific show in one genre. Um, I kind of want to stretch my muscles and and uh, see what it's like to do something totally different. Oh my god, I love that! I love that. Um, and it kind of branches into Trinity's question: If you could be on any show from the past, what would it be? Well, I guess House of Cards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that question. laughs> so it's kind of perfect, like kind of yeah. boom, right there. Uh, Donna wants to know: uh, Asking something totally different. Do you follow any sports teams? I'm with that. Nope. I'm, yeah, I, I've never been. Uh, I've never been a sports fan. I think um, when I was growing up, my mom, uh, she was like really anti what she what she would call jock. And she was mm -hmm. like, yeah, I don't want you to do I, like so she sort of indoctrinated me from an early age against competitive sports. Right. I never it like never even occurred to me that I could when I went to school play a sport because I was like, oh, yeah, we are people. We don't do that. Um, and it's actually one of the great regrets of my life. I, cause I loved play, you know, playing pickup basketball and right. soccer and, and I was, um, I, you know, I loved, you know, being outside and, and being athletic, but, um, but I never, we also didn't have a television when I was growing up. So in all of those formative years, um, I just wasn't exposed to it. And then when I sort of stepped into adulthood, it was like, I would have to learn a whole new universe of stuff and I'm not a great learner. So I just, I just let it go. So in general, I don't, um, I don't really watch much sports. Um, I've been to, I went to one bulls game uh, and I, I've been to one professional baseball game. I, okay. I'm, I'm strangely not uh, a sports. I've never been to, I've never been to a football game. Really? I, yeah. I'm like a quintessentially un-American. No, 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 no. It's, I mean, actually, this makes me, I, I'm glad we had this conversation because I feel like I actually don't want to do the same thing to my kids. I want them to feel like the universe of sports is something that they can embrace and enjoy and, and learn from. Um, and uh, I should, I should take them to, uh, I should take them, them to some games. Can't do yeah. it now. Well, of course not. But you can actually play back, some of the, right you play back some of the classics, you know. Yeah, that's true. And to go, this was, this sport that I never watched growing up and I want you to, to learn it. Um, yeah. <laughs> speaking of you learning things, uh, Aaron wants to know if there's a new skill that you've picked up during quarantine, um, aside from making fried rice on the regular. Um, I'm sure there is. What have I been doing? Um, or have I learned nothing during quarantine? God, that would be terrible. <laughs> Not um, terrible. It's hard enough to deal with some of this stuff. Uh, I've been doing a little bit of drawing lately, really? which is not a new thing, but it's something that I haven't done in a really long time. And I have found it remarkably therapeutic. Um, there's something about just sitting down with colored pencils and mm -hmm. not, not listening to a podcast, not listening to anything and just drawing. That's actually quite lovely, but something that I, I haven't made the time for in a really long time. Um, is that something that you do with the kids or just for yourself? Th I'm talking about like creepy grown man by himself. Yeah. Um, although, although my daughter, uh, Mason is, she is just a, she is constantly drawing and she has such an imagination. Um, I was going away on a little camping trip to get some, some me time. And she, uh, made me a little drawing. Um, which actually I have right here, um, as I was going away, which was the sweetest thing. Um, hold on one second. I'm coming back. Just grabbing the drawing. This is amazing. We are getting a firsthand look, y'all. This is very sweet. This is the this is the drawing. Aww. 
and it has an, an inscription that was uh, transcribed by an adult. But it says, when you are here, it's like roasting marshmallows over a fire. And when you are gone, it's like a rusty old log cabin sinking in the swamp. And wow. that's, that's a rusty old log cabin sinking in a swamp. Right Listen, there. that is that is biblical poetry uh -huh. right there. Yep. That is absolute magic. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Okay. Do your do your teenage children still say sweet things to you or uh or when yeah. was the last time one of your children said something? To you? Uh well usually it's the it's the littlest one, the three year old that is the sweetest. Oh um, right. You still have a little one. Yeah, right? yeah. When she wants something though. She's already she's been here before. I believe uh she's an old soul. So she's real quick to use the you're my best friend and then say, Can I have dot dot dot? And I'm like, that's savvy. You're that so good. Crazy. You're so good. Who taught she's you that? Go, she's going places. In the I know. World. I know. It's crazy. Um, okay. So Ashley, oh, this is a this is a heavy question. Okay. Ashley wants to know, as far as you can tell, will us Cas fans be satisfied with the ending of the show? Hmm. Um. I don't know. How do you define satisfied? That's um, that's the question. It's, um. It's poignant. Okay. Um, it's, it'll be both a sad and proud moment. Okay. Okay. Is there room for a spinoff? Okay. Uh, um, I don't think so. Okay. All right. Um, I mean, the, the thing with Supernatural is resurrection is always justifiable. It's of always course. possible to bring somebody back. Um, but I think that there'll... I don't think I don't think there will be uh, a TV spinoff. I wouldn't be terribly surprised if there was a Netflix movie at some point down the road, okay. um, which is kind of a spinoff, um, or like a you know a six episode limited run reboot that we did uh, somewhere down the road. Um, I think I think we'll probably all find that we don't like it out in the real world and want to have a reunion at some point. Gotcha. But, um, but we'll see, you know, uh, there's really no knowing what the future holds. That is so and there's true. definitely nothing, there's nothing in the works at the moment. <laughs> so we, we are coming down to the last minutes, but we've got a ton of questions. So I'm going to try to speed read as okay. many of them as possible. And we can do like a rapid fire, yes or no kind of thing. Are you ready? Oh, that's good. Dizzy Bunny asked, uh, let's see, you had some great fight scenes. How long did they take to learn? Or did you specifically learn how to fight by doing them? Um, I think I, I did get better at doing stunt fighting over the course of the show by a, by a lot because I hadn't really done much on other shows before getting to Supernatural. Um, and we um, it, it really depends on the scene, uh, how much how much uh, rehearsal goes into it. If it's like a knife fight, we, we spend a lot more time rehearsing just because it's more important that you, right. um, you know, don't hit don't each other. Don't actually stab people. Um, but a lot of times uh, we, we can, you know, break the scene, break fight scenes up into little pieces and just do one little segment and then move on to the next little segment and not have to spend a lot of rehearsal time. We can just like get this one little thing done, shoot it, then move on to the next part. Nice. Uh, so it really depends on the scene. Some, some scenes take a lot more work than others. Um, but in general, um, in general, we don't start like working on it before, like the day before that, that would okay. be the, the most lead time we get. Gotcha. Emma wants to know if you could bring one character back to life, who would it be? Um, I think I might bring Charlie back to life. Well said. Well said. Heather wants to know, what is your weirdest talent? My weirdest talent is this. That is weird. Oh, please stop doing that. <laughs> that was, well, okay. Yep. Got the heebie-jeebies now. Thank you. Um, uh, Sonia wants to, uh, wants to know, my kids want to know what your favorite recipe from Adventurous Eat Eaters was. Um, my favorite recipe... I don't know. I, there's a lot that I like. I like the um, I like the uh, breakfast cupcakes um, where you basically you breakfast sandwich cupcakes where you where you do an egg and cheese sandwich but in a cupcake tin. Um, I like the um, shepherd's pie in a mason jar jar a lot because that was like a comfort food for me as a child and also right. it's pretty. I don't know. I Can't like that. I like that. Patricia asks uh, says Cass has died many times. Which one affected you the most? Um, I think, I think it was the, the most poignant one for me actually was the death of Jimmy, who was the vessel of Cass. Mm -hmm. Um, there was something about the, the humanity of that death that actually got me 
uh, on an emotional level. Nice. Nice. Sue asked, if you could go back and give 16 year old self uh, some advice, what would it be? Um, <clears throat> uh, express what you want and need in the world. Well said. I think that's for everybody. Good grief. Yeah. I need that at my age. Uh, Garvin asked, uh, what beer do you like? If you like beer at all? Um, I don't have a, I don't have a favorite beer. Just whatever's in the cup. Yeah. Get, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Put it in front liquid, of me. I drink like it. a liquid beer. <laughs> Ooh, a solid beer. Uh, Guinness is kind yeah. of a solid beer. Yeah. Uh, Emma wants to know what's your, what's been your favorite episode to work on? Um, I think, I think I will ultimately say uh, episode 18 so far of this season. Okay. My favorite. Maybe that's just because it's fresh in my mind. Um, but that was the last episode that we shot before we went into quarantine or nice. uh, shelter in place. And I, it was a, it was really great. Nice. Lots of fans are asking, uh, when is your poetry book coming out? I don't know. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm about a week away from submitting it to publishers. So gotcha. there's, there's some variables there out of my control. Got you. Tamara wants to know, what are some of your uh, most memorable photo ops at conventions? Have you had a uh, crazy? Oh yeah. There are a lot of, there are a lot of times when, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go through the, we'll have fans coming through the photo op line and, and on Supernatural, Supernatural cast is pretty liberal with what we'll do. We'll put on like the most ridiculous hats or skirts or right. whatever. And we kind of roll our eyes at each other sometimes and just, you know, roll with it. And every once in, a, once in a while, someone will say something that we're like, no, we're not going to do that. Do like, can, I, <laughs> can I pretend to fellatiate you? And we'll say, no, we're not going to do that. Um, but a lot of times you're like, they're kind of going through fast. And, and if our default is yes, sometimes things will um, <laughs> slip, slip through. through a little. And I and uh, and a woman dragged a chair into the into the photo op and said, um, "Can I give you a lap dance?" But I I just heard lap and I think I I just somehow was like, "Oh, she's just gonna sit on my knee," and so I just like sat down on the chair, and then she started taking her <laughs> she started taking her clothes off, and the staff of the uh, <laughs> they rushed in and pretty much tackled her. But uh, that, was, that was an interesting moment. Yeah, yeah. Did they take the picture though? That's the real question. I don't know if that's if right. that was documented. I hope you it was. You will find out. That yeah. would be on the interwebs. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Carrie wants to know, uh, would you play a bad guy again? Yeah, of course. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Mary in Ireland, uh, do you remember any of your ballet training? No. Not a single lick? Nope. Not a pirouette? Not a fourth stance? Nope. Third, oh man, nope. that's crazy. Uh, crazy. Fourth position, second position. Yeah. Demi, well, I don't know what any of those things are. Okay. All right. Patricia, last question. If you could pick another decade to go back to, which one would it be and why? Um, <clears throat> you know, I'm I'm just reading um Undaunted Courage. Um that is the name of it, yes. Uh, which is the story of Lewis and Clark. I happen to be a distant relative of of Lewis, of Lewis really? and Clark. Um, but I'm, I'm just reading this uh, very detailed history of Lewis and Clark's um, adventures. And I have always been fascinated by exploration of the early American West and the sort of survivalist trappers. Mm -hmm. And I would love to go back to the earlier mid 1800s and join some of these Quebecois uh, trappers as they venture into the North American hinterlands. That sounds like a great adventure to me.